so bright. Let us worship this beautiful sunshine. I've not seen you in so long. I have actually. I saw you up by the seat twice, two days. Woo! I want to show you a piece of magic right now. At the moment, you see a woman dressed in pajamas. Now, this <laughs> crinkled sack. And now, you have a perfectly reasonable, ready to work, capable woman body. It's magic. I went around on the Friday night of the Kaylee with a whole bottle of wine in this one, two wine glasses in this one, and no one got video. I'm disappointed in everyone. Disappointed. Where is the evidence? So I'm going to do a few bits and mobs today, but mostly it's going to be emptying this suitcase and we're going to go through what I got in Edinburgh Yard Festival 2019. Woo! Okay, here we are. Are you ready? Am I ready? Oh, my finished cowl from Ocean's Yarn, beautiful Ocean by the Sea. This is her BFL uh, nip base. It is especially knit up into cables actually. It's very squishy, so soft. I just ate some cereal and it's really cold in one tooth and I'm like, oh dear. Oh dear, it's cold, but I think we're all right. Now, <clears throat> I have not looked at this yet. Let me just get me a little bit. I have not looked into this bag yet. I just threw everything in as I was, as I was buying them, buying it. So it's gonna be a bit of an adventure for you and me and I'll try and keep the dirty laundry to a very minimum. <laughs> but I'll empty my small little rucksack first. The first thing that comes out is this beautiful, stunning cow. So this is my Edinburgh yarn finish. Hello. Now, this is my Edinburgh yarn festival finish. I wore it up Arthur's seat twice and I wore it into the festival. And Ocean actually just sent me the pictures that she took of me wearing it. Um, at, she, had, she was there at the BIPOC um, and BAME meeting. Um, and um, I stopped by just to be like, oh, look at it, it's so pretty. And she took a picture. So that's really sweet of her. Thank you, Ocean. All right. <clears throat> this is my oh, all time favorite thing. <sighs> so nice, so squishy. This is the Cable Crush Cowl by Carmen, no, Carol Pierre. Carol Pierre, there we go. So pretty. Let's put that somewhere here. Right. What else? <clears throat> some lollies that I was giving out at some point when I tried to remember. Um, they had little sheep on them. Little squishy sheep. I think it's like made like rock and then cut. So these are kind of made into long thin strips and then cut and then. It's pretty amazing. Oh. But I didn't give out all of them. Oh, I got some gorgeous nuts. These are unbelievably gorgeous. I got these from May from Matham and Itter and I started eating them on the second trip up Arthur's Seat May. Oh my gosh, they are too beautiful. I'm gonna save these for special occasions. I got my pencil from Hey Brownberry. Hey Brownberry loves my ideas. She's told me that she does, so I'm gonna use that as a hair shtick. Excellent. So she's with me always. What's this? Tickets, 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 tickets. I was so lucky with tickets this year. I had, I met a, an awful lot of people who were, um, kind enough to help me out with a couple of tickets. So that was really nice. Oh, yes. Oh, Prisa was, oh yes. So this was, uh, Prisa was a lady that came up with me on the, um, on the second walk on Arthur's seat. 
and she gave me this these amazing things what's this mother's fragrances oh beautiful four sticks natural fra fra natural fragrance sticks beautiful and like a marbled color and then she gave me a little mini of her hand spun in my color <gasps> thank you so much Prisa. at least that's what it looks like i tried to say the name and then i was like i'll give it a good go I'm glad you wrote it down. <laughs> and she's from she's from um, Holland, which is so great. The Netherlands. My, now my Netherlands friends. My Dutch friends. That's what they call you, right, these days. And then the rest of it is just kind of um, rubbish. Oh, I got some beautiful vegan chocolates from Joe, from Gojo, which was really nice, really sweet. So I'll have those with a nice cup of coffee once I get some milk into the house. I have no milk in the house at the moment. Um, I got these really nice cups. We got them when we were kind of traveling around. I didn't bring um, my travel cups and they're really light and they're handy for kind of going to actual coffee shops because I find that I have my red flask, but sometimes it doesn't fit underneath the, um, the coffee maker machine. So they have to use a disposable cup and pour it in, which is a bit, it doesn't really, you know, what's the point? And that is everything, I think. I took everything out of those pockets. Okay, on to the next round, which is the big bag. So this is my woven piece, which I'm really proud of this. I'll do a full podcast about this woven piece and how I did it, and I'll show you the inside and everything once I'm kind of I have the space and the time for that. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, this was the bag that I got this incredible dress from. This is the Slow Wardrobe. <clears throat> and this is a layer cake dress. So this is the Slow Wardrobe and this is where I got this beautiful piece of piece of clothing. And um, they're at a number of shows actually. And they've actually just started a podcast, yes. Oh yes, oh sorry, I have to change legs. Change legs, change legs, okay. So they've just started a pod a podcast, the Slow Wardrobe podcast. I haven't I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I cannot wait to start. And they will be at Wonderwall on the 27th and 28th of April, uh, Wolf Fest 28th and 29th of June, and Fiber East on the 27th and 28th of July. So yeah, I love this dress. It's um, especially woven um, linen from a mill. <clears throat> I believe the mill is. I don't know where the mill is, but they are in constant contact with them. And then every dress is hand sewn by um, one of the team. And I love it. I love it so much. This is size one. There's a size zero. And the size is actually, the changes between the sizes, I think the ease difference is six inches. So the sizes are fit a lot of sizes you know like a one will fit someone smaller than me and bigger than me and then the, the zero will fit someone like very much smaller than me you know what I mean so the the size range is incredibly inclusive and you have to see it on someone to see it I find sometimes like when I was walking past them in the in the previous years I would see racks and racks of clothes and I was like no, I'm not here for those but nah but like Mars showed me hers and I was just she dragged me to the booth and she was like, try this on. I was like, okay. I couldn't take it off. So it came home with me. Yay! <laughs> and it's got pockets. We've talked about the pockets. I need to stop talking about the pockets. Okay. Close, close. Empty bag with the last little scraps of James's socks. I was so glad they fit him actually. <clears throat> I don't know where he's put them. He's probably wearing them today actually. Which makes me feel nice. That bag is actually from Carmen, from Keeping Me Sane, who is actually doing a fundraiser, I believe, for a little um a little autistic boy for his family to build a fence around his house so that he can go outside and play and he won't run into the streets. So definitely keep an eye out Keeping Me Sane on Instagram. She's doing a giveaway, which is really nice. <clears throat> oh yes, this was my buy from um, the make wool and I, I'm kind of on brand here. So this was, what do they call themselves? 
Hawkshaw sheep. Hawkshaw sheep. Hawkshaw sheep. And I bought 250 grams of black Cheviot roving and Shetland roving. So it's a minimum of 250 grams. So they're always gone over. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I don't know what I'm going to make, but they were just such lovely bumps that I had to have them. They had to come home with me and they're all just ready to spin. So I'm so excited. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go from the inside. I've never died with a, like a, a sheet, a roll of fiber. So I'm quite excited about that. <coughs> so that was Hawkshaw sheep again. And myself and Mina basically picked over the whole booth. We were like, get me, get me. I was so bossy. Oh, well. Um, what's this? Oh, Hannah, Corner of Craft, gave me this bag on the first day because I was, I was like carrying loads of stuff. And she was like, take that. I've got 5,000. So this is the lovely Knit with Attitude bag. And I really like their logo. It's very quite similar to mine. Like it's got the world and the yarn. So I really love the Knit with Attitude um, shop. They uh, do a lot of work with refugees and um, yeah, their, um, their yarn is incredible. I can't remember the name of it at the moment. Garn, I think it's called just Garn something. And they also supply the Pleister backpacks and bags, which I bought last year. So. <clears throat> oh my God, oh my God. So. At knit night, um, there was a bit of a de-stash that happened with spin cycle yarns and dragon horde yarn brought over some spin cycle. And I got some, I got some, I got some. So this, maybe if I hand spin something similar to this, so that means he's been fighting with a cat outside all day. So if I hand spin something akin to this, if I hand spin about 150 grams of something else, um, this could be a shifty sweater or something, or I'm not sure, but it's beautiful colors. So I got three skeins of spin cycle yarns, dream state spin cycle yarns in these beautiful blues. Oh, they're beautiful. So I was thinking I could hand, uh, hand spin like a dark, navy or maybe even the black this black to go with it or this one to go with it and i could make a sweater or something i don't know yay oh there's my sock needles keep them safe keep it safe keep it seen keep it secret um there's my bits bits and bobs bag Oh, that's my mug. Oh yeah, we got this like good to go Grace. It was like a, I think it's made of a bamboo little holder. So it's got my name on it. Oh, so nice. Uh, my pavement, which I wore once or twice, but um, I'm still a bit frustrated about this, um, the yarn choice that I made for this. The um, hedgehog fibers kind of is pulling and dragging um, too easily. So if I was to recommend, because it is on a, such a, a loose gauge, it's knit on a five millimeter needle, um, make sure you have a high twist yarn so that the individual strands don't get pulled um, when you're wearing it. Just advices. <coughs> advices, advices. Some of those, some of clothes, some more clothes. <gasps> I wore my lovely hand spun and I met Isabel while I was wearing it. Isabel Kramer, who's the designer of this pattern. This is the You May pattern. And I got loads of lovely comments on this. Thank you so much, everybody. That was really, really exciting. Then, walking trousers. Mm, nobody cares. Bits. Bobs. Bits. Bobs. What's this? Oh, I think I spent most of my money at Midwinter Yarns, booth. <clears throat> Let me find the other yoke. Bobs. Oh, the, the, the little, um, the little box, my engagement ring came in. Oh yeah, I got engaged. Um, but I, we lost the, the stone in the middle. 
so I'm, I'm kind of really sad about that but hopefully we'll go to town today and see if we can find another uh, similar stone to pop it in um it's a it's a promise ring but it i'd love to have like a whole promise ring to keep as a memory you know maybe to be used by further generations or something um uh, right okay what's in here so oh yeah Okay, so this is my whole Midwinter Yarns haul. The first day I came along and I saw this incredible pack of linen. So this is Sweet Peas Rainbow Pack, 100% Lithuanian linen, 16 colors, 50 meters each, approximately 800 meters total, 22 pounds for 800 meters. It's pretty good. So, um, I'm not sure what the weight of it is. I'd say it's like a, I'm not sure. It'll, it'll go onto my loom. It's going to be a rainbow warp. And, I'm, and I bought a matching kind of um, weft thread to go through it, which is like a dark navy. Um, Lithuanian linen, color 216, lot 219. So this lovely kind of inky, inky blue color mixed with these gorgeous, A dark weft tends to set off a really colourful warp really nicely. You can see it in this piece. This is my woven piece here. So the weft was really bright and then the dark wet, the dark warp highlighted the colours. If it was a white warp, it would have turned everything into pastel light blue, which I'm not about. I'm not about that life. <laughs> so give me intense kind of jewel tone colours every day of the week. I think. So <clears throat> that was my first purchase on the first day. Then I went back. I can't get over how cheap that was. 800 meters for 22 pounds. Is that like a lace? I'm not sure. It might be a lace weight. Hang on, what's this one? 100 grams, 450 meters. I don't even know what I paid for this. Heavy lace light fingering, that's what it is. It's a heavy lace light fingering weight. 22 pounds for 800 meters. That's like 11 euros for 100 meters. It's really good, that's what it is. But I got these beautiful yarns as well. This is very special. This is Old Centrum, 100% Swedish wool, two ply wool yarn. And it is uh, 300 meters in 100 grams. So it's sport weight, but it's a gradient. They're a gradient. So I bought two for weaving again. Um, so the dark is going to go on the outside and then it's going to grade into, fa into fade into the white like this. This was set up as a gradient and it just looks so impressive. So I had to buy this this is absolutely um, beautiful um i'm really ex really 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 excited about using these um and it's very very woolly wool um it's a really nice it'll be really nice on the loom i might have to um spread it out a little bit because it will fluff up so i'll have to use a little bit of a larger set whereas i'm going to use a quite a fine Read. I'm going to have the threads packed a little bit tighter together on the linen and I'm going to have it a little bit looser, looser packed on the um, wool just because when you take it off it will felt and full and fill up those spaces um, and shrink and um, so and the linen won't shrink too much I think. So this is Ul Centrum. Ul Centrum gradient wool from Midwinter Yarns. Now this is this is the last one and this is what i was stunned by okay right are you ready for this this is uh finish one second yeah finish i think yes 100 percent finish finish wool um sumo las no wait hang on i'm gonna i'm gonna try this it's gonna, are you ready this is gonna be gas Suomal laista vila 
zur Moralista Villa. <laughs> now, these two yarns, I got two. I'm not showing you the color yet because I just want to explain to you what these are. These two are naturally dyed wool yarns. So she uses, and she has the different types of watch, different types of flowers. She uses only five things uh, with different mordants and different reasons. So she says, um, she uses indigo, laca, oh sorry, indigo, lac dye, weld, madder, and cochineal. So those are her three th or five things that she uses to create colors. Um, I think her name is Anna. Um, and the colors that she gets from these, I have never seen. Well, I have. I've seen, I've seen it only from one other person called Debbie the Dyer. And um, the work that goes into creating these super intense colors are, it, it, it takes a long time. It takes a long time and a lot of skill, a lot of knowledge. And I was so excited to get these. So I decided to get these colors. Look at that green and that blue. Now the indigo I know is, is um, fairly reasonable, but like then blending it and variegating it. And look at this, this. She had some gorgeous pinks and reds, but pinks and reds really aren't my thing. So, and there was amazing intense purples, burgundies. Have a look at the vlog. If you haven't seen the vlog yet, definitely have a look. Um, they're amazing, amazing colors. So this one here, it's called Riotto, Ruotto, and it is uh, dyed with indigo and weld, which makes sense. So weld is a yellow color and then a little dye over with indigo and it creates this kind of green color, kind of a bright acidy, acidy green. And then this one is dyed with almost everything, everything except lac, which, um, so indigo, weld, madder and cochineal went into this one. So this is her brand here and it is available from Midwinter Yarns. Um, if I can say it, I can read it. <laughs> Orin Koke Hra. Orin Koke Wow. I don't know how that last A is pronounced, but it's so pretty. Have a look on Midwinter Yarns um, website. So this is another woven project, I think. I haven't woven with a, well, I have woven with a variegated um, warp yet, but I just, I really want to, because I think that would look really, really awesome. I was also thinking about maybe making the Daybreak Shawl by Stephen West, because she had it up in her booth, and I was like, ooh. But um, I just had to have some naturally dyed yarn that looks like this. I've done a little bit of natural dyeing, so I think that I understand how floop and difficult it is, you know? But it's not difficult, it just takes so much time. Okay, what else is in here? <gasps> oh! I was given a little sample card from my friends at Pins and Needles, Zoe, and then uh, it's All About Yarn as well. So All About Yarn is the yarn dyer, and we basically, they have created a Welsh yarn. So, Cartre, oh, she's written it on the back. She's thought about podcasters, everybody. Cartre yarn from yarn to from farm to yarn in Wales. We're thrilled to be able to bring you our exclusive Welsh mule and blueface Leicester blend DK weight yarn, handpicked fleece from Brecon wool depot, spun in Carradine and dyed by us from Cardiff. So everything is done in Wales. Cartre means home in Welsh and we'd love to welcome you to share a bit of our homeland. Find us on Instagram, Facebook and Ravelry as Cartref Yarns. So this red is called Drag. This second one is called the Welsh word Fjilam. Fjilam. This uh, yellow is uh, Or. Green is Forest. The blue kind of tealy color is sapphire, and then this like purple is bringing in. Uh, this dark color is glow, and then this last one is natural. 
Um, now, <laughs> I think these are all Welsh words and I was just making them up. Let me know how it did. I've got the language skills. I don't. Welsh is a mystical language, mystical, beautiful language that I do not know. It's completely, completely different to Irish, the Irish um, language. Scots Gaelic and Irish Gaelga are very similar. Very, 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 very similar. In like, I can read Scots Gaelic. I can't really under, like the, listening to them because they speak it too fast and it's a different dialect. But um, Irish Gaelic and Scots Gaelic are very similar. Um, but Welsh is a whole different thing. A different thing. They've got like extra L's all over the shop. Fab. <laughs> but yes, I need to learn more about this and I hope they do a whole thing. I'm sure they will. They're very good at doing it. Those are all the different colours we've got. So starting with the red, I'm working in the other direction. Jenny's going to pronounce our colourways. <laughs> I, was, oh, I was all excited that you were going to be... Okay, so red is drag, which means... Dragon. Then orange is flam. Flame. Then we have ire. Gold. Forest. I'm sure you can like that one out yourself. <laughs> Forest. <laughs> Sapphire. Sapphire. Ranhinol. Purple. Glow. That's the charcoal. Coal. It means coal. Yes, <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> and material. Natural. Actually, Branhinol the purple, that means kingly. Yeah. So those are all our colourways. So that's really exciting. Colours! Rainbows! Very nice. I love this green. These two. Actually, these two together would be really nice as well. Oh, so DK weight. So jumpers ahoy. Okay, oh, here we go. I'm getting bigger now. Okay, what was that? Oh, yeah, I did that. That didn't really work out. That's why. Um. <gasps> Where are my earrings? Where did I put the earrings? Oh, I bought. Okay, so. I have another story, story time with Grace. Story time with Grace. Let me find, let me find it. Oh Lord, oh I hope I haven't lost them. I haven't lost them. I put them on and then took them off and then put them on again and then, oh there they are, beautiful. I should make them pretty, shouldn't I? This is what happens when I just throw stuff everywhere. So, first into the booth, first in, I was wandering around, having a great time, you know, la 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 la, suddenly saw this. I couldn't walk past it. Knitted wire jewellery by Makila. No, Malika, sorry. I keep on putting the L and the Q in the wrong place. Sorry. Malika. Ooh, so shiny. So jewellery. Shiny. Oh, she gave me this gorgeous bag as well. She, I was like, that's so fancy. You're so fancy. <laughs> so I think her name is Suira. Let me find out. I should be banned from going online in the middle of the blog because that took me like 10 minutes of just like scrolling just to look at all the pretty things. Anyway, so her name is Surya Hossein and are you ready for them? I just saw the picture that she put up of me wearing them as well. She, she must have made them for me. I don't know. She couldn't have been thinking of anyone else. It's just unrealistic to expect that. That. Sorry, my nails are awful. Those are the most beautiful flipping things in the world. Oh, whoop. And they all fell out. Because I've just been wearing, they're so sturdy. So, this is made by Usha. The yarn is actually Ushatita in the, uh, it's a singles base. And then it's hand crocheted and added on these beautiful beads which match uh, perfectly. Oh, they're so gorgeous. I have to wear them right now. So I walked past her booth first and I was like, no, I don't need, I don't really wear big jewellery, I don't really wear big earrings. And then I walked past the second day and these were out and I was like, oh, hello. 
And then I met um, the countess at the at the booth as well. It was just lovely. She's actually, I think she's coming over to Ireland. Uh, Surya might be coming over, not the countess. Countess is coming over for woolen. I'm going to her class. I said that. She was like, oh, thank you. I was like, don't be silly. I'm so excited. No, sorry, I'm so violent. Um, <laughs> but I think Malika, perhaps, maybe, Yes, Malika. Um, she may be coming over to do a pop-up in Townhouse Yards. Keep an eye. Keep an eye. Because if you see this woman in Ireland, go to her. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> also, hey, Brownberry's on the plane away and I don't like it. She's wearing two of her lovely dresses. She's layering them, packing win. Well, she's got four pockets then. One, two inside pockets and then two outside pockets. Amazing. Anyway, she's a queen. Um, oh, I got this stunning silk hanky from a woman in my DMs and I can't remember her name now instantly, but thank you so much. I am so excited to start spinning on this. I don't even, I haven't even opened it. I, I, you know, I like, I, cause I was running to pick up Mina. Yes, that was the first day. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my God. It's a, it's huge. It's a scarf already. <laughs> this isn't a hanky, it's a bat. It's incredible. That is amazing. Now, I can feel all, every single little crevice in my hands, but do you see a theme? I think there might be a theme. But this is incredible. You must let me know where you got this. Because other people will want to know where you got this, so then give it to me. You know, I'm not looking for more. It's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. You are so kind. So that was very exciting to see her because she texted me and she was like, oh, I'll take it off your hands. And then she showed up and did it. I was like, oh my God. It's exciting. Speaking of spinning, I did a massive spinning haul actually. Those are all the yarn purchases. The midwinter yarns and then the spin cycle. Then I got fiber. I really got lots of fiber actually. Oops. I got lots and lots of fiber. What's that? Oh, I got one more yarny purchase from Iona. Um, I got the single space, singles of their um, kind of mixed Iona wool because I got a grey last year and I didn't really know what to do with it. So I'm actually going to weave this with the grey and make a houndstooth scarf or houndstooth fabric and then do something with it. Cause, so that'll be, that'll be brilliant. So it's a lace weight. Um, and yeah, so that was from Iona Wool. Oh, I also got this stunning. Uh, this is from Manos del Uruguay in the Alegria base. And I got this from my lovely friend, um, Veriton, Vero. She does the um, Las Knitting Amigas with uh, Hohi Locatelli. And she's based in Uruguay and she came to Edinburgh this year with a bunch of Spanish podcasters. It was really, really exciting. And I took a load of them up at Arthur's seat. So that was really, really fun. So, hey, others oh, themes happening. I love it. Not just put it here. It's so soft. Manos del Uruguay Alegria is beautiful. Thank you so much. I wonder what to do with it. Socks, shawls. See, the thing about having a color, right, makes it easy to choose and your stash goes with everything else in your stash. 
right? Pick a color, stick with it. <laughs> uh, oh, and I got an EYF bag. Got an EYF bag. Uh, I got a few different pins for friends. So I picked up a few pins for my Solidarity Swap Partner in America and also a pin for um, uh, my friend Adri as well. So that's exciting. And I need to put together a little package now and send them off. That's exciting. Um, oh, I got another little present. As a, so it was another D stash from Meg from um, Mrs. M's Curiosity Cabinet. And she, this beautiful little bag is so cute, but she also chose a wonderful color. Oh, it's really nice. It's a goldy chartreuse green. Oh, oh pretty. Oh Meg, thank you so much. Oh, so that's exciting. It's also exciting. Gosh, it's like shopping again, picking out your, emptying your bag out. Thank you, Meg, you're very sweet. Then, right, actual bag, actual buying stuff. This whole bag, and it's a, bi a biodegradable bag from John Arben. So I got the John Arben annual of five pounds for sale now. It's got, it's brilliant actually. It's, got, it's kind of instead of their catalogue, um, they've got they've got a catalogue of all of their yarns inside, but not only that, they have beautiful, beautiful um, shawl patterns, crochet patterns, uh, sock patterns. They've got um, kind of machine favorite machine kind of spotlights. Butler is apparently John's favorite. There's um, so they have a little spiel about themselves beautiful pictures but my favorite bit oh this is cute oh also aren't these girls the best i want to eat their adorable faces like but not in a weird way actually i don't think there's a way for that not to be weird i love them mm. <laughs> sorry but like I just want to hug her forever. All right, enough of that. Also, I really want to make that crochet cowl, or that crochet shawl. It's by Fade Dapsher Hughes. Amazing. Amazing. And some gorgeous socks by Rachel Atkinson. Um, and you get to meet all the guys and girls at the fest, at the, who work at the, um, Sorry, I'm making that loud and noisy now. You get to meet all the people at the mill. There's there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine members of staff, including Mr. Smoke, who's the most important. Look at him. He sees all. He's the genius behind it all. <laughs> the beautiful hat buoyed by Sonia. Sonia, I think. Is that you? Is that your pattern, Sonia? It's gorgeous. Um, oh, there's a there's a like a, a Where's Wally style illustration by Katie Greenbean, and it but it, instead of a Where's Wally, it's a how many? So our feline friend Mr. Smoke has found his way into the mill. Can you find his ten? favorite hiding places. It's like the old Bunty ads. Oh, so cute. The old like, like um, annuals that you'd get and you'd be like, there's a word search as well in here somewhere. There's a word search, there's a spot the difference. Oh, yeah, there's the word search. I can't wait to get my, get my pen on that. Anything that has me interacting. I love it. Let's just spot the difference. I love it. Beans, what's wrong with you? Can you hear him? Can you see him? Nice no, coming. Come see 
Mr. Smoke. Find Mr. Smoke with me beans. Anyway, I really recommend getting this. It's a lovely book. And you get patterns and it's only five pounds. Oh, so good. Now, okay. Oh, sorry. My feet sees. Oh, there. He's there. He's just pancaked himself. Come closer, Mr. Beans. Such a pooper head. That's the polite term. I, I bought Beans a little toy, but I think he might have already hidden it somewhere. Oh yeah. I bought Beans a little bit messy. Now, Mr. Beans, this is very important because I got you a little friend. Boop. <laughs> anyway, right, okay, concentrate, Grace. You were with John Arbon, yes. You were with John Arbon. I got their new gin and tonic range. <laughs> so they made, or not gin and tonic, uh, um, cocktails. They made a cocktails range of tops to bring to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And it's, it was very exciting. It was so nice. Oh. So, I can't remember which type of cocktails I got. I'll have to go back to the video and, rem and try and remember. But this was their uh, white, I'll call it maybe a white Russian. <laughs> yes, anyway, these are the colours I got. I'll show you. I think it was, this was the slow gin. Yes. I think this is the slow gin. Or this one is the slow gin. It was a dark and stormy, but I think, I think that was the brown, like dark brown. Anyway, these are the ones I got. 200 grams of each. They're around seven pounds 50. Something like that, Some, seven pounds per 100 grams for these because I think there's like a bit of cashmere and a little bit of silk in there as well. So soft. I cannot wait to get spinning those. I'm planning on, you guessed it, a gradient. You guessed it. So that is John Arbonne. That was their fabulous booth. It was always such a joy to go into. It's like Oh, it's wonderful. I really like it. So, then I went around and I got into Spain City. Spain City! So last year, I was kicking myself because I didn't get any bats. I didn't know how to use bats. I didn't know anything about bats. Didn't have a clue. This year, I was like, you know what? Bat me up, baby. So oh, look at these. I love this kind of fire star that's popped in there. It's like a galaxy. It's like a universe. And then to match the universe theme. And it's also glittery. Glittery goodness. Oh, I love them! And then this, this is the funniest one. This one right here. So Mina gave me a little present. And it's exactly the same colorway. So I've got two. So if I spin this up the same way she did hers, I can get like the same type of yarn and we can, I can, I can do a thing. A thing! I can do a thing! <laughs> so this is Caradale, Tussa Silk and Angelina, Angelina and Firestar, 100 grams, 261 yards, 300. She's much better at this than me. My gosh, Mina. So good. Good. She's very good. We had a lovely time together actually the weekend. We realized that we really hadn't spent any time, like much time together at all. 
like it feels like we did because we both do the podcast so we both like follow each other's podcasts and we know about different things going on and but actually the time we spent together probably would fit like before this weekend probably would include maybe six hours in our whole lives like here and there and meeting up you know but like we spent a good four days kind of within in and around each other's uh, experience so it's really really lovely and this is so hilarious we see we know each other isn't that incredible i love this yes so this is spin city sorry a bit of firestar a bit of angelina a bit of angelina Louise, that's her name, that's her name, Louise at Spin City was so sweet. She was so, so sweet. She um, she offered me a spindle, one of her beautiful acrylic spindles. So she offers so many different types of spindles. She makes them herself. She gets like really interesting pieces of paper or little flowers. These are actual real flowers and she encases them in acrylic and she makes spindles out of them. They're beautiful. Look at them. Thank you so much, Louise. You are so kind. I loved meeting you last year. And I got I got a couple of things off her last year, like kit last year. So this year I got fiber. But fiber! Oh, so nice! I can't wait to get digging into that. But I can't dig into that until I move through some of that. Ah, I'm not gonna get guilty this year. Maybe I will. Oh, I almost forgot. I got some beautiful badges. I got some badges this year. Um, I got. I had to go around to Ankoi Teen Biog, my friend uh, Marna from Ankoi Teen Biog, and get some of her incredible badges that she's made up this year with her little sinister kitties on them. Because she has the first two cutest cats on the internet. Well, actually, they're the second and third, but she thinks they're the first. So we'll just let her have it. Because Beans is the first. We know this. <sighs> so I got... This one is the first one that I got. It's a, a kitty in the moon. It's a kitty in the moon. It's beautiful. She did a, um, a gorgeous... Um, embroidery kit which I bought off her last year at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and uh, with the moon on it I never got around to it but it's really pretty so she used that in and this one which made me laugh so much when she came out of it it says help well oh she's it says welcome to sleeve island and then the kitties on the island going help can you see sleeve island it's an island I don't know it's not gonna focus is it Nope, not gonna focus, that's fine. And then these are her Venn diagrams. So I got the feminism, which is the top one, knitting over here and cats, and then me and the Mingle. And there were loads of different types. There was crochet, there was dogs, you know, so. I think the feminism was always there. <laughs> so you only had the one option. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, probably. I don't know, actually. Oh, I had the, the little pieces of paper that came with it and then I lost them. I'm not very good at this. Oh, well, so these are going to go on my tabard. They're they're on my uh, my cottage number nine bag. Um, so I brought a bit of you with me, Terry. You came with me. And um, yeah. So, that was nice. I'll put them on the inside there. So, oh, hang on. Oh, I got another little badge from Clogs in Africa, a knitting podcast about stitches, adventure, and life in Africa. I think she lives in South Africa. Oh, a little zebra. Clogs in Africa. She must be Dutch, maybe? Iris Richter. Clogs in Africa. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, and I... Three Kleiner Sheepies. Sheepies? Sheepies? I'm going to call it Sheepies. Um, she came up to me and she gave me a lovely um, stitch marker, which I have on my bag actually now. And it's her little, 
a little sheepy. Where is it now? There it is. I have it just attached on here, so I always have a stitch marker with me, because you always need one. So it's like one of these incredible progress keeper sheepies. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really sweet. I was so glad to meet you actually as well because sometimes there's I've already got I'm already getting messages from people going, Oh, I was I was too shy to come up to you. I didn't want to come up to you. And I was like, No. <sighs> what can you do? What can you do? It's over now, <laughs> so maybe next year. But sometimes, you know, people can't come back or things like that. Anyway, it's fine. So Mina got me some other beautiful things. She really shouldn't have. And now I can't remember what's what. Oh, I can't remember if Joe or Mina got me these. But I think it's Mina. I think it is Mina because I need to do this. Thank you, Mina. Setting examples. I'm going to do that. Now, I can't remember if it was Joe or Mina that got me these though, these gorgeous hexagon stitch markers. I'm obsessed with them. So nice. Oh, a tiny bag with kittens. Oh, and field notes. I always wanted one of these. These are awesome. Thank you so much. I saw them on, um, oh, nice. Got like a little measuring tape at the back there. Her internal records. So fancy. And then, as well as her hand spun, she got me some hand woven fabric from her time in Bahrain. So I remember watching one of these vlogs. She went to the hand weavers in Bahrain where they actually had a loom dug into the grounds. They were sitting in the ground and they were weaving and they had the warp spread out onto the street. And she gave me some of this. She was like, couldn't think of anyone better. I was like, yes, you're right. <laughs> so, and at the color as well. Oh my goodness. I think she made a couple of bags with it, but, um, it's, ah, oh, it's so much. I her so much. Oh no. What am I gonna do with it? Maybe a dress. Eh. I could make a dress. Oh, so shiny. Maybe I'll just wear it like a cape. Maybe I'll wear it St. Patrick's Day next year. I'll just wear it like a cape. I could actually. I was thinking about visiting Iran. And I'd need some light, light things, you know. I look amazing. I really want to go visit Persepol Perse Persepolis and a few other places. And I was like, I want. I think that's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to keep it. I don't want to cut it. I think I might do that. Oh, oh my God, this color. It's, see, this is the dark warp again, you see? So you've got the weft being the green and then the dark thread, it's actually black thread underneath it, which just makes it go poof. Makes the color just intensify by 500%. You know? <gasps> I love it. I could be a Celtic Druid. Oh, it's like really cool. I'd say in a warm country, this would be really, 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 really nice to wear. Cause it would just be like, it would keep the sun off and be really cool. Yes, good plan. Good plan, Mina. I'm a wizard. And I've got my fancy dress now as well, with pockets. This is the most amazing thing I've ever... Yep, this Edinburgh wins. All the other Edinburghs are rubbish. No, it's not true. <laughs> okay, 
I can't take this off. I took it out to look at it and then I put it straight back in the bag, but now I'm like, forever. Thank you, Mina. So happy, so happy. I think you did get me those exact only ones. Um, I know Joe did get me this gorgeous um, hand cream and <laughs> this really nice uh, little um, key ring. Thank you, Joe. You're so sweet. And some somebody got me these. I can't remember. Oh, I think it was Ali. Ali got me some beautiful wine and chocolates and we ate them and oh, we drank all the wine at knit night and it was really, really precious. It was lovely. And she got me a whole, oh yes, she got me a whole, yeah, you got me the hexagonal stitch markers. Oh my gosh. And she got me this beautiful little kind of capture. I was thinking, for, she was thinking actually for like a scarf for James and I was like, oh, I really like that idea actually. That's a really good idea. So thank you so much. Oh, that was Jen, actually. Jen is the sheepies lady. I'm getting really confused. <sighs> oh, I picked up the Woolweek, the new Woolweek hat, which is about, which is the roadside hat. It's about sheeps and ships. <laughs> That's what it should be called, sheeps and ships. Sheeps and ships. So it's the roadside beanie, sheeps and ships. We all know now that, that that's its name. They can stop. They can rebrand now. They need to reprint this. Sorry, guys. I do that. <laughs> oh, I got this gorgeous set of beautiful stitch markers from Camabornia, from Dennis and Pia. I got a beautiful badge. Queen badge. Little kings and queens of our own universe. And the really beautiful Camabornia. And I think they were, yes, they were wood etched by Patricia of P4chan. Oh, for, by nitogra nitography. So there's a little mitten. There's some crowns. There's love, play, love and play. This is so precious. <sighs> Thank you so much, everybody. I get all emotional. Don't some emotion. Oh yes, this was another one from Ali actually lemon mint tuft lanolin rich hand and body balm tuft woolens i've always wanted to get some tuft woolens but like it's hard when you're not like in the states i mean i could buy it but like shipping and stuff so and then some oh beautiful kitty tape this is really as well i think little kitty tape so cute paper sticker ribbon from daiso oh uh, what else? There are some boots belonging to James, some boots belonging to me. I got some nice boots, some nice new boots. They're really nice. I feel like a little, like a Victorian lady trotting around in these boots. They're so nice. I'll stop talking about the boots, but I'm really happy about those boots. Now, what's this? I love it. I've got two of these now, so there might be a little giveaway, a little, little prize packet going to somebody. Um, oh, and Cece gave me, well, gave out beautiful stickers. I don't know where I'm going to put it, because I want to keep it forever. Cece knits the world. I believe she's starting a podcast. I think it's more like a vlog style podcast where, and it's not just about knitting, it's about traveling and going places and just interesting places she goes. And you should all follow her immediately to keep up with that because that's gonna be good. Oh, more treats by Katrinkles. And I've managed to shake the buttons loose with my vigorous um, walking. But they're gorgeous little buttons with sheep on them, so you actually use the holes to create little pictures. That was from Ali as well, thank you. Gosh, I think you're, I hope your name's Ali. I think it was. Um, Mars gave me these incredible things because um, I needed to get them and she like had a few extra, I think. I'm not sure what the story was, but she gave them to me and I love her forever because I love her forever, that's why. 
Oh, oh, one more thing. The, the one more thing that I got from no, I have two more. Two more things to talk about. Okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the end. We're nearly at the end. I went to Weft Blown. Weft Blown, which is a weaving and spinning um, place thing, thing place, and I bought all the things. I wanted to buy more, and I didn't. Are you proud of me? Thanks. Oh, this is very uncomfortable doing it on the floor. I'm not good at this flexible floor business. But Weft Blown are based in Ayrshire, North Ayr. And they are, they had so cute. They actually had like a loom in the shape of a, a, a little cloud. And I was like, can I have it? I want it. I didn't get it. But I got some reeds some really fine reeds, which is going to be really, really useful when I start weaving with lace. So I've got a 15 dent reed, which is super fine for kind of lace and light fingering. And then I've got a 10 for doing some playing around with um, DK and fingering maybe on, uh, what's the word, with more twill work. I also ran into somebody who also gave me some heddles <laughs> and I think they might be the same. She had a 24 inch loom and they sent a 16 inch by accident. So she was like, who has a 16 inch? Can I give it to you? Um, Cause they never got, they, they said, you know, they never um, sent a packing slip to return it. So it was just hanging around, they couldn't use them. So I was like, hey, that's me. I think they're the Kromsky ones, but they fit, they fit the Kromsky and the Ashford heddles fit each other, so it's no problem. It's so nice. I met herself and her husband, and they were from Ireland, and I was like, yeah, to come over here to do this. He was like, yeah, obviously. Obviously. The only problem with the Kromsky ones is they never have the, they don't have what they are. Like, is it 15 a? Is it a de like which reeds are they? What reeds are they? Explain. Like, what's wrong with writing it on it? What is wrong with writing it on it? Anyway, so I'm gonna have to just do do some counting or assessing to see which one is which. Am I blind and I just can't see it? Surely it's written on here. They're written on here. Which which dent they are? Which read they are? It's not on the sides. It's on the back. Nope. I mean, I shouldn't be arguing. I got them for free. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. I did offer to pay, but I think they were just kind of knocking around, so I just took them off their hands. I don't know. They're not even the same. Oh, oh, Kromsky, Kromsky, Kromsky. That's written across them. But that's no good to me. I want to know what dent it is. Do I have to count them? Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, well. Anyway, I've now got reeds everywhere. Reeds everywhere. So that's exciting. That's wonderful. Um, so if that's the 10, I think they're probably 10s or 12s, maybe there's probably 12s. Well, oh, that one's probably a 10, hang on. Oh yeah, that's a 10 and then that's a 12. So cool, okay, if I have two 10s, then I can do a really nice, um, I can do a really nice twill with that on fingering weight yarn, I'd say. Yep, that'll do it, sweet. So that was, amazing like a real really nice really lovely i also got from wet flown i got oh there's malika there's her beautiful card mm. alhambra hoops hand dyed by ushatita hand crocheted earrings gold filled gold filled oh it's gold oh wow gold filed I'm not very good at this. Okay. 
I also got some small little um, thingies for thingy, you know, some small shuttles. They're only like 250 each or something. So I was like, yeah, sure, give me those. those. So that was great. I also got, yes, a set of 25 weaving cards. So they're already made up for tablet weaving. Um, I could have made them myself, but I kind of like the way that they're color coded. So they're color coded on the edges so you can tell which ones are up, which ones are turned and all this sort of thing. So that's nice, kind of makes it a little bit easier. I was wondering, I'm wondering now is 25 enough? Maybe I should have got another set to 50. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, that, that was my weaving experience with Weft Blown, which was very, very good. Um, oh, I also got a lovely card to leave to my Airbnb uh, from Tilly Flop Designs. And I also got this lovely air freshener. No yarn is left in this vehicle overnight. <laughs> I love Tilly Flop. Her stuff is, I always, I try and get something. I'm going to try and get something from now on from her because it always feels great. Just the cards are so good. So the card said, oh, I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival and all I got was this card and then there was a little asterisk. And then on the back it was like, this might be a tiny bit of a lie. <laughs> Which is so true, because a lie, it's a lie. So that's going in the car. And then the final, oh no, Lilycon Yarns gave me, they, they've, they've offered um, a prize for the Cable Cal. This is uh, Lily Pond Yarns. She said, one of them is for me and one of them is for the giveaway. So Lily Pond Yarns is a beautiful team of gorgeous girls, gorgeous ladies, really, really nice. I met them last year and I've been kind of following them. They've had a little podcast, but they're kind of, I'm not sure if they're doing it anymore, but um, beautiful yarn. So pretty. Lily Pond Yarns. Look at this. Look at this bit. This little bit here. They go really well together. How can I leave them? How can I separate them? Oh, beautiful. So it's a Superwash Merino Nylon 80-20 and then Superwash BFL and Bamboo. Yum. A lot of latte is this, this one here. <laughs> and this one is pistachio. Oh, perfect. Oh, James loves pistachios. Thank you so much, ladies. That's fantastic. Excellent for the giveaway. Woo! And then, now my final piece. My fight for my final piece today is the Isolde booth. I went into the Isolde booth and I got a lot of stuff from her last year and I haven't used it, which is why I didn't get any yarn this year, but I did go in for the Lighthouse Yarns section on diversity, the diversity and inclusion in the racism and the anti-racism books that went in there. Um, and that was curated by Kate, Kate O'Sullivan, who is a fabulous, fabulous lady. And I've been following her and I love her. And, I, and she gives really good hugs as well. Excellent hugging. Excellent hair too. Like it's amazing. So these are the two books I got. I'm so excited about this. In Sister Outsider is a book that's been recommended to me by several people, Audre Lorde. I was really, I just kind of, there were so many there. And like, I, th I feel like any of them would be good but I decided to keep it to two. So Sister Outsider, um, Speeches and Essays by Audre Lorde. Audre? Is it Audre or Audrey? Audre. And it's got a new forward by Cheryl Clark. So this is presenting the essential writings of black lesbian poet and feminist writer Audre Lorde. Sister Outsider celebrates an influential voice in the 20th century literature. This is char in this charged collection, 15 essays and speeches, Lorde takes on sexism, racism, ageism, homophobia and class and propounds social differences as a vehicle for action and change. Her prose is inclusive, unflin inc sorry, incisive, unflinching and lyrical. Yes, I've read some of her work before, you see, so I knew that her writing was just spectacular. I needed to get it. Her prose is incisive, unflinching and lyrical, reflecting struggle, but ultimately offering messages of hope, which I think helps quite a lot in this kind of conversation. Hope. The commemorative edition includes a new foreword by Lord Scholar and poet Cheryl Clark, which celebrates the ways in which Lord's philosophies resonate more than 20 years after they were first published. These landmark writings are, in Lord's own words, a call to never close our eyes to the terror or the chaos, which is black, which is black, which is creative, which is female, which is dark, which is rejected, which is messy, which is dot dot dot. So, 
Ooh, I'm getting shivers already. Beans! Beans, are you into this? Gotta get educated. It's tiny paws, make tiny noises. Anyway. Um, and then the second book, which I was really excited to get, because I just saw it on the table, I was like, I need to learn more about this. It's called It's Not About the Burqa. And it's edited by Mariam Khan. And it is actually a collection of stories and essays by... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 Muslim women. So Mona O. El... El Tahwi, Coco Khan, Sufaya Ahmed, Nafisa Bakar, Afia Ahmed, Yasmin Midhat Abdel Magid, Jamila Hekmoon, Mariam Khan, Ash Af Afsan D'Souza Lodi, Salma Hadrani, Alma Salim, Saima Mir, Salma El Wardani, Aina Khan, OBE, ooh, um, Rafia Rafiq, Malia Boot. Buatia. Do you know what? There's a vowel trolley and you're like, where? Uh, did, uh, and Nadine Aisha Jassat. <sighs> so I was talking to um, her, uh, Corinne <coughs> <coughs> Hawari Bazaar about this book, and it's just, it's really interesting. I've only started the first essay, and I can't wait to get in, get into it, and just learn more because. Um, the, the Muslim religion, the Islam religion, it's just, uh, it's something that I'm not really sure about. I don't know much about. I, I have friends, but that does not mean I know necessarily what their lives are like. So I'm really excited to read this book. So it's about all these different women's experiences with um, Islam, with Muslim religion with being a Muslim woman. And some of them um, wear different, some of them um, go to different parts of the the religion. Some of them wear hijab, some of them wear burqa, some of them don't, some of them don't do, you know, they're all individual people. And it's all their individual stories about the whole situation. I can't wait to read it, more about it, and learn more about it. What are you doing, Beans? I think we'll close out on a little bit of beans playing with the Loch Ness Monster if I can catch it. Thank you so much for joining me for the whole video. Woo! I've got to make a pretty picture to put on Instagram, so bye. Hey beans, will we just pretend that you were playing with a toy and not with um, something that you caught? <laughs> Let's just do that. Great plan.